Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder that can affect the thyroid, the eyes, and the skin. It is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the United States. Stimulation of autonomous production of T4 and T3 is through antibodies against TSH receptors. These receptors can be checked in the serum as a TSI, or thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, or thyroid releasing antibody. A positive family history is always a frequent accompaniment. A new diagnosis of Graves' disease, one would start by checking thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins, which are there to stimulate TSH receptors present on the thyroid gland, which in turn increase the activity of the gland with consequent increased production of thyroid hormones, usually T4 and occasionally T3. Thyroid function tests reveal the classic features of low TSH, high T4, and or T3. Let's go through some of the clinical signs of Graves' disease. Patients may have an elevated blood pressure on physical exam. They may also have a widening of their pulse pressure. A widening of the pulse pressure manifests when the systolic blood pressure is much higher than the diastolic blood pressure. This is the hallmark, hallmark of thyroid hormone effect on the heart, where increased cardiac output and increased pumping of the myocardium occurs, thus widening the pulse pressure. Patients also manifest clinically with tachycardias. These tachycardias may be regular or irregular. If they're irregular, they're called atrial fibrillation. There's also a diffusely enlarged thyroid and occasionally a thyroid brewery, which is the abnormal sound that the blood vessels of the thyroid make as blood flows through them rapidly. Patients may also manifest pretibial myxedema, which we'll, we'll describe in, in subsequent slides. And they have the characteristic eye signs. These eye signs can include lid retraction or lid lag, proptosis, which looks like bulging of the eye in the orbit, scleral injection, where the sclera of the eye appears red, and finally, periorbital edema, where the entire orbit seems to be swollen. In the right image, you see many of the features of classic dysthyroid eye disease. The diagnosis of Graves' disease is made clinically in most cases. The first lab to, to check after TSH and free T4 would be the thyroid stimulating antibodies. Radioactive iodine uptake and scan will show increased uptake with diffuse activity on the scan image. The treatment of Graves' disease is a stepwise approach, usually starting with theoamide drugs, followed by beta blockers to control heart rate. If the thyrotoxicosis recurs, or if there are any compressive symptoms of the thyroid gland, surgery is considered. In the absence of a response to medications, one can also consider radioactive iodine ablation therapy. Theonamide drugs can be used consecutively for up to two years. Methimazole, one of the first line agents, has a higher intrathyroidal retention rate and therefore is more effective. Typically, once daily dosing also makes this drug quite convenient and it has a reduced side effect profile. One important thing to be aware of is that it is a first trimester teratogen, causing a condition called aplasia cutis in the fetus. This should be taken into account, especially when prescribing methimazole to women of reproductive age. Another drug is called propyl theouracil, or PTU, which has limitations based on its side effects. It can increase amino transferase levels and affect the liver, and in very rare cases lead to fatal hepatotoxicity. Second line treatment for Graves' disease includes radioactive iodine ablation, which will in most cases render the patient completely hypothyroid. As a consequence, they then would require lifelong thyroid replacement. Finally, surgery is considered in patients in whom control cannot be achieved with drugs and who are not comfortable with radioiodine therapy. Other lab patterns of thyroid disease worth mentioning. When you see a normal TSH, but an elevated T4 and or T3, consider the rare condition of secondary hypothyroidism that is caused by a TSH secreting pituitary adenoma. Where the TSH is low, plus a normal free T4 but an elevated T3, this is the condition we described earlier known as T3 toxicosis. And then finally, if the TSH is low with a normal T4 and T3, consider the condition of subclinical hypothyroidism, 
typical causes of which include pregnancy and other non-thyroidal illness.